Hi, it's Brett Ingram, entrepreneur and award-winning product creator. Today, I wanna to share with you nine ways to motivate your team other than with money. So if you run any kind of business and have any kind of team at all, you know that one of the most important things is to make sure that your team feels motivated, that your team feels good about coming into work and doing the job that they need to do. So that way, the entire business runs better, more efficiently, more effectively, and of course, more profitably. And motivation is always a tricky thing because it's not always easy to understand what each person you need to tap into in order to unlock that. So a lot of times what happens is people focus on the easiest, simplest solution and the lowest hanging fruit. And they think, well, geez, if I could give more money, then people would be a lot more motivated. Give people a raise, give people a bonus. And the fact of the matter is, first off, you're not always able to do that because if times are tight or things aren't going that well, or you're in the growth phase, you may not have a lot of extra money to throw around. But I got good news for you. Because in reality, money is actually not really a motivator. It only works for about 14 days. After 14 days, statistics show that people get accustomed to the new level of income and it no longer motivates them anymore. There are far more effective, far more powerful ways to motivate people that have nothing to do with money. So the first one of those is to give people autonomy and ownership in terms of what they're doing. So no matter what somebody has as a task in your business, it's obviously vitally important to what needs to happen. And there's nothing worse than having a boss or a manager standing over you, watching you, verifying every piece of work that you do. So if you give people autonomy, you give them ownership for what it is that they need to do, then that's a powerful way to send a message to them that they're valuable, that they're important. And that is something that people will internalize and feel responsible and want to do a better job because of it. And if, especially if they understand the purpose of what they're doing and how it fits into the whole. The second thing that you can do is simple, 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 and it's validation and recognition. Everybody wants to feel like what they're doing matters. Everybody wants to feel like when they've done a good job, it's recognized and that they get rewarded for it. So it's as simple as telling somebody they did a great job on X, Y, or Z. It's as simple as telling somebody, I hope you know how important you are to what we're doing here, how, you, how important you are to this entire company, how important you are to our, our mission and what we're trying to accomplish. It doesn't work without you. Those kinds of things go a long way in terms of making people feel important and that goes a long way in terms of the motivation that will then pour out of them in terms of the work that they're doing because they want to do a good job and they want to live up to that expectation that you've set. A third thing that you can do is you can engage your employees in the incentive process. Okay, so it's a little bit about money, kind of, but not really. If there's something that you do inside the company and you want to reward people, Instead of just sort of thinking of things on your own and figuring out how you're going to be able to do it, instead what you can do is you can actually engage them in the process, ask them what would be valuable for them. If they were getting a reward for something, what would that look like? You know, would they want, you know, a half day or would they want time off or would they want, you know, uh, a toy that they could buy for their desk or, you know, a new monitor or computer or whatever? It doesn't matter what it is. But for each person, it might be different. But that might give you ideas, and if there's some commonality, that's a really good place to start in terms of what they're, what they're going to be able to do. The fourth thing that you can do is help people understand that what they do plays a part of a bigger role and what that part is. You know, if you say to somebody, listen, um, I need you to file this report, and then I need you to go and answer these six emails, and then I'm gonna need you to go and do this and do that. It's a bunch of tasks. It's a bunch of disjointed tasks where the person just feels like they're being ordered around to do the things that need to be done. If instead you let them know that, listen, I'm gonna need you to correspond with these people and these are our best clients. So when you send an email, you know, you're speaking for the company. This is a big deal. This is super important. 
So how you handle this, and I trust that you are professional. I trust that you have a really good way to write. So I'm going to put you in charge of this and let you go and do that. That's a totally different thing. You know, if you're putting somebody in charge of the idea that they're able to handle the customer service element of what you're doing, you're trusting them with the company name, with the brand, with the image, all of those things. And to understand how their role fits in, as opposed to, oh, send these three emails, makes a big difference to people. It lets them know that what they're doing is valued. It lets them know that what they're doing is important. And it lets them understand how it fits in and how it's unique to what everybody else is doing. They're not just another number. They're not just another, you know, person to fill a seat. The fifth thing that you can do is get to know people as people. Human to human, one to one. You know, this is a great way to build a connection with people and make them feel important and part of something. And by the way, it'll expand your own horizons too and you'll feel good about it. Because it's really nice to get to know people. And it's really nice to understand them beyond just what their role is in the office. So this can be done in a variety of ways. I know, you know, one of the companies I used to work for, and when I had my own uh, staff of seven in-house, what I used to do is one-on-ones. So every week I gave each person that worked for me 20 minutes of undivided attention, just me and them. And it wasn't me rating their performance or grading them on anything or tasking them with anything. It was open dialogue. What issues, concerns do you have? You know, what issues, concerns, you know, what are things that I can help you with? How can we make this better for you? And oftentimes personal stuff too. How's your life going? You know, how, like, how's your family? How's your wife? How's your husband? How are your kids? Did they win that, that big game last week? Those kinds of things go a long way into letting somebody know that you care and that they're connected to what you're ultimately doing. And again, when people feel connected, they feel bought in and they want to do a better job naturally. So everybody benefits because you benefit, you enrich your own life and your own experience and your own social and personal relationships, and you also help the company at the same time. A sixth thing that you can do is to offer flexibility. You know, um, if you have a job or a, a company where things need to be done in a certain amount of time or at certain hours because that's when the stock market's open or whatever it is, so be it. But to whatever degree that you can offer flexibility, you know, a company that I worked at uh, when I was younger had this really great policy. And it was a, it was a company of relatively like vibrant people. And it was a, it was a, you know, it was a staffing firm. So we had a lot of people, people in the office. But one of the things that the owner did that was really awesome is during the, once spring started and we started the summer season, what she would do is every other Friday, half the staff would get noon on off. So they would only work a half day and it was an alternate. So they weren't cleaning out the office on Friday and shutting down because obviously that would hurt the business. But they were letting half the people go home. And then on the following Friday, that half stays the whole day and the other half goes home. So every other Friday, you'd have a half day. It lets you have a long weekend. It lets you enjoy the beautiful weather. And again, as an employee, as someone who was working for somebody else in that situation, it made me feel valued. It made me feel important. She wanted us to have time off to be able to go and do the stuff that we wanted to do with our friends, with our families, for our personal lives. Because she recognized that if you work hard all week in the office, there's not always time to do all the stuff that you want to do. And if you have kids, a lot of times on the weekends, they're taken up with sports and other activities and things like that. So that's a really important thing that, that you can do as well, is to offer that kind of flexibility. The seventh thing that you could do is to stay connected. So it's one thing when you are doing something and you get to know somebody, and that's great. And that is a great um, sort of jumping off point. But what happens is life is dynamic. Things change. People's circumstances, you know, ebb and flow and the pressures that we have on us in our lives change. Our personal circumstances change. You know, they say all the time, right, in the insurance industry, they're always like, well, you got to check in with your clients because they're, they're life-changing events. Well, it's the same kind of thing. I mean, the, at the end of the day, right, when you connect with somebody, you get to know them, that's great. 
but nobody lives in a vacuum. And so as their life goes on, as things progress, things may change. So it's important to keep that connection. It's important to do things that are, you know, maybe outside of the office. So that way you have an opportunity to connect socially, you know, do an offsite. One of the things that we used to do is we used to do offsites. So I was in a company where we had consultants and they were out in the field. So they didn't have as much connection with the firm itself, with corporate and with those kinds of things. And so what we would do is on once a month, we would go to a professional baseball game or we'd rent out the ESPN zone or go to an amusement park and we'd invite their spouse, you know, we'd invite their significant other, whatever it is. And that way, and it was all on the house, the company paid for everything. And by doing that, it got everybody together. It got them to see how they fit into everything. It got them to connect with other people and build that sense of community. When you have that sense of community, people want to be a part of that. You know, they want to be there. It's funny because, you know, during the years of COVID, um, it was past my days of working for other people or being in an office like that. But it made me think back to that time. And I remember, you know, and I've worked in some great environments and some terrible ones. And I can tell you that in the great environments, I wanted to be in the office. You know, COVID would have bummed me out because I loved the people that I worked with. You know, it wasn't a stretch to get dressed and go in in the morning. I looked forward to it because the energy in the place. I just liked everybody. Conversely, in the places that I worked that were terrible and they were run by tyrannical leaders and such, I didn't want to be there. So COVID would have been a blessing in disguise because I wouldn't have to be there and I wouldn't have to deal with it all the time. And so staying connected is a really important part and making sure that everybody on your team stays connected is also important. If you see somebody sort of, you know, disappearing or withdrawing a little bit, you want to make sure that you check in with them and see what's going on. The eighth thing that you could do is provide perks and privileges. Now, again, this doesn't have to be money. It doesn't have to be a reward that, you know, you're going to get a, you know, an all expense paid trip to whatever, whatever. They can be smaller things. Um, one of the things that we used to do is we used to have weekly competitions. When we were in the staffing industry, you know, um, it's all about learning about what job opportunities you're trying to fill, finding great candidates and matching those two together. Well, you can only be successful at that if you understand what the jobs are that you're trying to fill and what those companies are looking for in employees. So one of the things that we used to do was we did job board jeopardy. And we had a little contest where um, one of the managers would ask questions about certain jobs and everybody that was on the team had an opportunity to answer. And whoever answered first in terms of which job that they were referring to got a point. And we played this through all the job orders that we had open. So this way it incentivized you to really get to know the jobs well, which is gonna increase your chances of making a successful placement, but it also added to the fun. So at the end of the end of the Jeopardy, you got a trophy. The winner got a trophy and the trophy moved around desk to desk. So everybody wanted the trophy and everybody wanted it on their desk for the whole week until next week. And so it was a really simple incentive and reward, but it was something that absolutely worked. You know, you could bring in a uh, massage people, right? A masseuse to give people a quick chair massage while they're in the office. You could give people, you know, an extra hour off to go work out at the gym or, you know, everybody goes to the, you know, to the park or we're going to have movie time today. You pop in a movie, you know, office space or something funny, and everybody sits and watches it for an hour and a half through lunch. So you extend the lunch hour a half an hour, something like that. But any kind of little perks are all things that make the office more human and it make it make it more fun to be there. And when it's fun, people are motivated and people will work. The ninth thing that you can do is offer the opportunities for staff to learn new skills. This is huge. Personal and professional development is always really important because people want to feel as though they're growing. Nobody wants to feel stagnant. No matter how challenging your job is, if it's repetitive, if you aren't growing through the course of the job itself, it's super important to offer opportunities to people where they can go outside of that to learn the skills they want. Now, these can be job-related skills. So if somebody is, you know, 
in charge of you know emails and you want to send them to an email etiquette course okay great that sort of connects but that's more for you than it is for them probably realistically ask them what skills they'd like to develop oh i'd like to become a public speaker great there's this class there's a you know a class that's being taught at the local hotel at a seminar you know what i mean it's it's a couple hundred dollars i'm going to sign you up for it you can go to that take a couple hours off of work and you can go down there and learn how to become a better public speaker. You know, there's an audiobook collection on this particular thing. You can go and learn that, whatever it is, an online course. So people can learn things, develop their own skills and feel like they're growing. When people feel like they're growing, they're excited, they're happy and they're fulfilled. And fulfillment is really important. You know, when we had technical consultants and they were out in the field, the reality of it is sometimes they were on an assignment that was a little bit boring. Their skill set fit it, so they did the job, but they weren't growing. The environment wasn't one where they could grow. So what we did was we built an in-house lab, tech lab, but we also financed out-of-office out of training. So when people were in between assignments and they completed the assignments successfully, they were rewarded with the ability to learn new skills. And they could pick the skills. We didn't prescribe what they had to learn. So if they wanted to learn Veritas Backup Suite or they wanted to learn, you know, Oracle this or that, they could go and they could learn that and the company would subsidize it. And that was a great way to show people that we're investing in you just like you're investing in us by helping the company grow. And so those are nine awesome ways to motivate people without directly just trying to pay them more money, which ultimately doesn't work anyway. So the takeaway Every business, look, is going to run better, is going to be more efficient, and is going to attract and retain higher quality employees and team members when the culture is positive, rewarding, and validating. So invest in making your team happy, and you'll not only feel great about it yourself, but you'll see a positive impact on your bottom line too. And remember, until next time, no matter what it is that you want out of your business and your life, don't compromise. Optimize.